This is the Commarker Omni One UV laser. You must be asking yourself, UV laser? Yeah, I've never even tried a UV laser before. Supposedly, it could engrave and mark materials that normally you wouldn't think about marking, or at least um, you would have to have like an interface layer. Look at it, you could do fruit, glass, um, of course, you know, various metals, baseball, um, you know, clothing, wood, um, acrylic, more acrylic, more food, and glass. Yes, glass. That is what I'm most excited about. Let's give this a try, shall we? So let's go over some of the specs of the Commarker Omni One UV laser. It is a 5 watt JCZ 355 nanometer UV laser. It has zero burn engraving technology. It's the world's first 16K HD laser engraver. It can operate at 10,000 millimeters per second maximum speed. Unlock all material with the UV laser. It has cold front thermal technology. It has electric lifting with two optical lenses. It's compatible with EasyCAD and Lightburn, and it has a 150 by 150 millimeter engraving area. As I'm unpacking this machine, I notice that um, companies are starting to provide real safety glasses. They are certified and are um, protection for the wavelength of the machine. I'm glad to see that they're finally getting rid of those garbage, just cheap glasses that don't protect anything. Now it does come with a lifting table upside down for your viewing pleasure and a materials kit for testing and an accessory kit. And what's in here? I think this is just uh, my power cable. Yeah, power cable and Allen keys. So let's go ahead and uh, assemble this. It just takes um, four you know, hex Allen screws to fix it to the base here. And that's about it for the base. Now, lining up your um, <laughs> the gavel head can be a kind of a pain. And I should have actually brought this forward one more notch. So if you do this, bring it forward just to the edge there. So you'll see that there's a, another set of screws to the left. Go ahead and use those because they'll bring your gavel to the correct space. The work area on the bottom is plenty big. And it looks like um, we may have some uh, almost like parallel cable here. Check that out. So that goes uh, on the top at the gavel itself. And then you're going to have a couple more uh, plugs in the back. You got your power supply and then you have your external signal. It'd be nice if there was a little bit more strain relief on these. I realize they are screwed in, but um, I'd like to see if that maybe some better um, routing, so to speak. And you have a wire plug in. This is for your stepper motor for your Z axis. Now you have your data right here, and then you have your rotary, you have your pedal control, and then you have an enclosure. I haven't seen that one yet, so I wonder what that one's about for if it's got some special exhaust. Again, it comes with these certified um, safety goggles. I would suggest definitely using them. And use an exhaust because you're going to want to exhaust any of the particulates that are coming out. Safety first. Make sure that there is no one in the room while operating this laser. And always make sure that your laser is attended. As mentioned before, this UV laser is controlled by either uh, EasyCAD or Lightburn. And I always suggest doing material tests. However, you'll notice that um, when you are doing your material tests, that you won't have a power um, setting on here. And that's absolutely common for UV lasers. It's mostly controlled by frequency cupoles and other settings. So don't be alarmed when you do not see the um, power on the settings and it's all grayed out. That's again, common. So that's why I would suggest doing material tests first and just be sure you start learning how this uh, laser operates. To me, operating this laser was a kind of a steep learning curve because I'm just used to uh, power, frequency, and speed. So when you start intermixing everything else minus power, it tends to get a little confusing. And with Lightburn creating these uh, power grids or <laughs> material test grids, let me rephrase that, can be very easy to do. So you can see that I'm starting to get some colors now and I'm starting to get the hang of this. So again, you're gonna wanna do this with basically any material. Just go ahead and your first day, just start doing some testing. And that leads us to today's video sponsor, PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? 
Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can. And they also offer other services such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCB Way. So here I'm going to do a um, aluminum business card. I'm doing it at speed 200, frequency 30, Q pulse one, and line interval, uh, basically 1000 DPI, which is a line interval of 0 0.054. And I'll go ahead and run this under a time lapse. It is really slow, but you will see that because of how the DPI is, it is going to give you some great quality images. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, I had to do this inverse. So you got inverse this image, and look how nice and clean that is. Oh, wow, that is pretty darn amazing. You can barely see the dots on here. You gotta really zoom in, but the image is just great. I mean, absolutely great. Again, it, it did take about you know, 10 minutes to do this. So that is just to show the quality of the laser itself. Now I actually decided to use the same exact settings on here, minus that I did not inverse the image. And you can see how nice this is coming out on some bass wood. And you can see that it's also engraving. It's not that deep, but one thing that stands out that it is not scorching this at all you can see that it's very nicely done here you got different shades and for wood I'm very impressed this one thing that this laser does very well it basically doesn't heat up your your plastics your metals and or and or wood uh, it does w create a marking effect on there his I guess you could say burning it, but it's not scorching it. Very nice and clean. Using the same settings on a slate coaster, and I did inverse this image of Iron Man on here. Again, it did take a little bit of time to do this, but uh, it's pretty detailed. Not as vibrant as I thought it would be, so I definitely need to tweak my settings um, and do maybe another material test on here. But overall, it came out rather nice. Um, again, I think that uh, maybe it's just the image itself. I could get it to pop. I will show you some other coasters later on where I do. Now let's do a stainless steel dog tag. Speed 600, frequency 35, Q pulse 1, and line interval 0 0.015. And it's going nice and quickly here. And I touch it, and to my surprise, it is just as cold as when I put it down. Which, if you've done it on any other you know laser source, the material will be pretty warm if not sometimes pretty hot and you can see that it's um there we go very clear uh, but i would like it darker so let's try a different setting so let's change the speed to 100 frequency to 40 q pulse width is 5 and line interval will be the same at 0 0.015 and already you can see how much darker this marking is sure it is slower but again how we're getting the power is just a combination of settings the power will be grayed out now i gotta touch this here and it's cold i i, I would normally be uh touching this and it'd be like oh hot 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 but no this is nice and cold and look at that that is really nice i mean sure the one behind it was okay but now we're getting somewhere look how nice and um clear that is i mean it well <laughs> it's not clear but you get what i mean but you're, you do feel a slight engraving on here. This is only a five water, but it definitely can do stainless steel quite effectively. Now let's do another rock coaster. I think I'm dialing in my settings here. So speed will be 200, frequency 30, Q pulse 20, and we're going to do a line interval of 0.1. And you could really crank these out. Um, this is on a time lapse here. I did get an order for these, so you will be able to uh, definitely make short work of doing coasters with like a vector file. And I did get this order for coasters. This is uh, Mr. Spotty on VCore's channel. Link will be down in the description. And um, let's just say that he doesn't show up for work. This is real time right there, so you get an understanding. And uh, look how nice and clear the contrast is here. I mean, it just pops. 
Yep, you could do a lot of these in a short matter of time. So I decided to change VCourse logo around. He's more of a GM guy, but I think he's converted to Ford. So, but we're going to just go ahead and do all these layers around the same speed 200, frequency 30, Q pulse 20, and keep my line intervals the same. And this will be basically the same across all of the files that are on here or all of the layers, so to speak. So we're gonna just go ahead and do that. Now, when you have images, they do take a lot longer than just words. So please price accordingly to your time. So I would definitely do a little bit of a price increase for something like this. But as you see, you can do nice batch engraver with no problem. It'll be definitely a lot easier if you create a jig, which I just didn't have time to do. But overall image quality is quite amazing on this. And it does have, um, compared to the Iron Man that I did before, you can see how much this pops because I'm starting to learn the settings on these. And um, again, you could make a lot of money just very quickly if you so choose. You could recoup the cost of this laser. And I'm going to be doing another project here that I got order for is um, hot shot glasses. And these are the settings for the shot glasses is speed 600, frequency 35, Q pulse one, and we're gonna do three passes and a line interval of 0, 1, 5, 0. And of course I had to do some testing. So always make sure that you have some um, product on hand to kind of waste, which was good for the shot glasses because I had four sides that I could test on. Now you don't have to do the whole image, but I was able to um, nail down my settings rather quickly with this. And you can see how nice this works. There's no interface layer or anything. It engraves glass beautifully. I, I, I mean, half the time or more is spent with me using like tempera paint. You'll see in my almost all my videos I've done with almost every laser I've used that I've had to use an interface layer. And this just shows how nicely that this can engrave. Absolutely beautiful. I did do three passes on this and I think that was more than enough and I got some real nice clarity out of here and let me go ahead and take this out of the rotary this is my temporary jig and um, let me see if I can get this focus you know it's kind of hard to read because it is clear but very nicely done and then you can see all my other testing on the other sides so I decided actually to do something special for this wedding here. I got these coasters and they have three different settings. You got flashing for fast, slow, and consistently on. And then you could just place your shot glass or clear object on this coaster and it helps bring out the lettering. And then if you fill it up with a liquid, it even pops even more. So I'm doing this with it um, as a kit, basically. And you can actually now see it when the light is like turned off in the room. And it just adds another layer of just kind of like, wow. And these shot glasses are going to be placed on the table and with these coasters at the wedding reception. Each person will be able to take one home with them. And I think it's just a great little gift for everyone that's at the wedding and it's just going to look really nice. Now this is with um, some Dr. Pepper in it. You can really see the contrast here and how it just now pops. Uh, it's really, really nicely engraved. And this is my jig. Yes, it's janky, I know, but I really didn't have much time to really come up with anything else. So I'm just using this rotary chuck as a way to hold it and these maker chips that uh, K2 Kevin designed for me. Now link will be down in the description and I just go ahead and rinse and repeat and you can see how nice this works um, I didn't have time to make a real jig but we're going to do 157 of these you're going to want to make sure that you are exhausting out because you don't want to be breathing any of these particulates in and of course wear the proper eye protection you notice that uh, I changed a little bit here that's because a different batch was a little bit different one was higher than another so you definitely want to pay attention to that as well. But I was able to get all these done in an afternoon. Uh, and you definitely want to make sure that you clean them because they get um, rather dirty rather quickly. Now, I also wanted to do a decanter. 
Um, and I'm a little bit nervous here because I only had one. So I wanted to definitely make sure that I had everything lined up perfectly and to make sure that it was flat and everything was right on the first try. Yeah, so I was a little bit nervous for this one. So we're gonna go ahead and lay it on the side and measure everything out. Now you definitely wanna make sure you don't bump the table. All I did was blow up the image a little bit bigger and I used the same settings as on the shot glasses and three passes and everything came out perfect. Now let's go ahead and wipe this down and see what it looks like. Wow, uh, un unreal. Everything just came out perfect. The lettering is nice and crisp and no interface layer. I mean, you really want to crank out glass, this UV laser is the way to do it. And lit up, everything looks really nice, and I couldn't be happier. Now, I just hope the bride and groom are happy with it, because this is a surprise for them. They have no idea that this is going to be at their tables. And we're going to fill it up with some Diet Dr. Pepper. Unfortunately, the coaster for the decanter is uh, not as bright, but... Needless to say, everything is packed and was shipped on time. And this is how they looked at the wedding itself. Nice and vibrant. And they actually put bubbles in with the shot glasses, of course, for anyone underage at the table. But I am very pleased and how they came out and the bride and groom were absolutely amazed with it. This is with some, some alcohol in there. Worked out absolutely perfectly. So what are my overall impressions of the Commarker Omni-1 UV laser? Well, everything worked out of the box as advertised, and that's usually something that I strive in my reviews. Does it work? Yes. Does it work out of the box? Yes. And there was really no hidden surprise. It comes with a lot of the accessories that you would need, this lifting table, a real nice pair of um, protection for your eyes here. It goes from 200 to 450 nanometer and remember this is a 355 so you want to pay attention to make sure that your eye protection that you may currently have will work with this machine. They give you a nice material package to test with and you're definitely going to need to use this lifter. And to me this is a major drawback. I should be able to use uh, material on the surface level that's only a couple of millimeters thick without having to use this rising table. And I want to be able to use the jigs that are provided here for lower surface objects. And I can't, I simply can't. I have to use that rising table every time. Now I know the reason why is that the stepper motor is at the bottom of this Z axis. So you have that gap there where the stepper motor is and just will not allow it to go down far enough to the build table itself. I've really never come across this with any of the gavel lasers that I've used where you can just work off the build surface. Um, I could usually engrave something as, as thin as a sheet of paper if I so choose. Here, you cannot. If they were to move the separate motor to the top, I believe that would have been the optimal solution. Now, with that being said, everything did work out of box as anticipated. I had no issues with this machine. It has a uh, steep learning curve. If you're used to just power settings and speed and frequency, you have to just learn that power does not imply to this. But overall, if you are looking for a laser to engrave glass and other materials very quickly and without having to use an interface layer, this is definitely the machine for you. There will be affiliate links down below. It does not cost you anything if you're looking to purchase it. And I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripod's Garage.